Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com, ElectronicLessons.com, and PaintballProps.com. This is a, an assembly video for the version 2.0 um, 4x4 keypad matrix processor kit with servo control. And uh, this version actually talks to you. It's not Arduino compatible, but it talks to you. It's got servo control, it's got a panic alarm. Uh, I'm going to show you how to put the PCB together from scratch. So let me introduce you to the parts. Got your custom PCB, 5mm power jack. 6 10k ohm resistors, a 3 pin terminal block, a 2 pin terminal block, two 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitors, a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, and a 1 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, uh, an 18 pin uh, PIC 18F processor, uh, the audio chip, uh, an 8 pin, uh, eight pin uh, header connector, 3 pin header connector, and 3 2 pin header connectors. An 18 pin socket, a 16 pin socket, four a 0 0.1 microfarad electro or ceramic capacitor, sorry, a single red LED, a 160 ohm resistor, or 160k ohm resistor, a 390 ohm resistor, and a 470 ohm resistor, two 2N2222 NPN transistors, three 1N4001 diodes, two header connectors a 5 volt relay and lastly a 7805 5 volt regulator now we're going to put this together piece by piece but first of all we're going to talk about uh, the resistors and the capacitors the resistors have no polarity you want to place your 10k ohm resistors in the R2 slot, R3 slot, R5 slot and R4 slot as well the R1 slot right here and the R9 slot right here your 160k ohm resistor goes into R7 right here, labeled 160k. Your 390 ohm resistor goes in the R8 slot right here. And your 470 ohm resistor goes in the R6 slot right here. If in doubt with these three resistors, use a multimeter to determine which value is which. The electrolytic capacitors, or sorry, the ceramic capacitors, are all labeled 104. They don't have a polarity. The, leads, the lead lengths are the same. They go into the C7 slot. C4 slot, uh, C5 slot, and C2 slot. The electrolytic capacitors. You're going to have to read the uh, labels on them because two are 100, 100 microfarad, one is 10 microfarad, and one is 1 microfarad. Um, the two 10 mic uh, 100 microfarads uh, go into the C3 slot and the C1 slot. Now, what you want to note about these uh, electrolytic capacitors is in, in all of the cases, there is a long lead and a short lead. You always want to make sure you're placing them in the right way. In the C1 slot, from this perspective, the upper hole has a little plus sign beside it. So make sure that you place the long lead in the upper hole. Don't reverse that, or else when you power it up, it'll likely pop. No one wants that. So long lead next to, into the hole with the plus sign next to it, the upper hole. In the C3 slot, labeled C3100U for 100 micro, there's also a plus sign in the upper hole from this perspective. Place the long lead in the upper hole and the short lead in the bottom hole. Don't turn that around again. You power it up, it'll likely pop. The 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor goes in the C9 slot right here. And there is a plus sign in the upper hole and a minus sign in the lower hole. Long lead in the top from this perspective, short lead in the bottom. Don't turn that around. Again, if you power it up and you have that reversed, it'll pop. The 1 microfarad electrolytic capacitor goes in the C6 slot, labeled C6-1U for 1 micro, and the left pin has a plus sign above it, the right pin has a short, has a negative uh, sign above it. Place the long lead in the left hole, short lead in the right hole. If you reverse that, it won't pop when you power it up, I don't believe, but your audio chip will not work. So solder those onto place. If you need to watch the segment again, I suggest doing it. The power jack goes right here and the footprint is labeled DZ jack. It only fits in one way. Make sure that the uh, um, hole is facing outwards. This is where you'll plug in your AC adapter. Now when you're soldering the three pins down to the board, apply a little bit of solder to one pin to hold it in place. Then carefully apply solder to the rest of the leads to connect them into the holes. Don't hold the uh, soldering iron to each lead for a long period of time. Be careful when soldering it. You don't want to melt the plastic. Very important. Now the diodes, you'll notice on one side of the diodes, it might be difficult to see from here, but on one side of the di each diode there is a white stripe at one end. There is a black, the, the other side is just plain black. And they go into the D3, 
D2 and D1 slots right here. Now on the footprint for each of these, there is a white stripe at one end. In the case of D3, it's facing the left side of the board. In the case of D2, it's facing the left side of the board. And in the case of D1, it's facing the bottom of the board. You want to make sure that from a bird's eye view, you place those diodes in uh, so that the white stripe on the diode faces the white stripe on the footprint. If you turn those around, you won't be able to properly power your device. And if you if you uh, if you don't place D1 in in the proper orientation when you uh, when your relay turns on for, during panic panic mode, what will happen is it'll cause a short internally and it will reset the system. So make sure that you solder those in very carefully and keep in mind the orientation when you place each diode. In the case of the red LED, you'll notice that there's a long lead and a short lead. The long lead is positive, the short lead is negative, and that goes in the indicate slot right here. Now the long lead goes in the left hole, short lead goes in the right hole. If you uh, mix up the orientation and don't solder it in correctly, what will happen is the LED won't light up when it's supposed to. The two transistors. There is a curved side of each transistor and a flat side. The flat side has writing on the front, and they go in the T1 slot and the T2 slot. Now, uh, on each footprint, there's a flat side of the footprint and a curved side. Make sure that when you place those transistors in, that you match the flat side of the transistor to the flat side of the footprint, and the curved side of the transistor to the curved side of the footprints. If you turn those around, and you, you, uh, you basically you won't get any audio, and your relay won't op operate. So yeah, that's it. Solder those all into place. Take care. If you need to watch this segment again, I suggest it because there's a lot of orientation here. You want to make absolutely certain that you're soldering them in the right way. Next, we'll do our pin headers and our sockets. First of all, I made a little bit of an error. There is a fourth two-pin header connector, so you will be receiving four two-pin header connectors, uh, or rather, two-pin headers. Uh, anyway, so the sockets. The sockets both have a notch on the left-hand side. On the two footprints, there is a notch on the left-hand side. From a bird's eye view, make sure that you place the sockets in so that the notches are both facing left from this perspective. I, what I suggest is holding them down with one finger, turning the board around, soldering one pin so that it stays into place, and then soldering all of the leads. You want to make sure that there's no shorts. It is, it's very easy to create shorts when you're soldering the pins, so take extra care into uh, flowing solder evenly and making sure that there are no shorts. If you do short something, use either a solder sucker or, uh, or uh, solder wire. Uh, alternately, sometimes you can just reapply heat and it will remove it on its own. In any case, back to the board. The header connectors. There's a two-pin header connector, uh, sorry, two-pin header here, here, labeled HP, you want to ignore the LP two-pin socket that is not used, and uh, S plus, S minus, and EN. Uh, S plus and S minus is where you uh, connect your siren. EN is, so is your siren enable. HP is high power speaker. Um, PRG is your program header. And your three-pin header goes right here. This is your servo. Uh, connector right here, and your matrix keypad connector right here. Your eight pin uh, your eight pin header goes right there. Now, what I suggest there is is you hold down the uh, header connectors with with your uh, your nail, and you turn around. You solder one lead each, and then once you're sure that they're standing up perfectly straight, you solder the other you solder the other uh, pin. And after you're all done, you check all your connections to make sure there are no shorts. So solder those into place. You'll see what it looks like completed in just a minute. After that we will place our uh, we will place our terminal blocks, our relay, and our 7805. For the time being and for safekeeping, take one of your two pin header connectors and place it over the PRG pins. Take your other and place it on the EN pins. You don't need to use them but if you watch the uh, video manual link below you'll understand what those jumpers are for. You don't want them to go missing. Finally, some easy steps. The terminal blocks both have a terminal side and a plastic side. Make sure that the terminals face outwards from the board and not inwards, or else you won't be able to wire any wire connections to them. The relay fits in the K1 slot right here. It only fits in one way. Uh, three pins on one side, two on the other. Make sure that you have strong solder joints on all five holes. The 7805 has a black side with writing on it and a white side. The white side faces the right of the board, 
with the white stripe on the 7805 uh, footprint, and the front of it with writing on it faces the left side of the board. Solder those all into place, and then we'll place our, uh, our chips into the sockets. The two chips have notches on the left hand sides. You can see them. Uh, you might not be able to see them very well from here, but there are notches on the left hand sides. Remember, we, had the no we have the notches on the left hand sides of the sockets. Don't place them backwards. You power it up. When they're backwards, you'll fry your chips. So place each one in until, and then once, once they're actually in, gently press down. Make sure that none of the leads are being broken. They are fairly easy to place. But what I like to do typically is place the bottom pins in first, bend down just a little bit until they find their seating, pop it in, and you're ready to go. So the video below uh, linked below rather will tell you how to uh, test this and how to how how its functionality works how to hook up the peripherals etc etc so thanks for watching everyone I hope you found this helpful